Good morning. Good to see you all out today. Thanks for being here. Um, I'm going to make a disclaimer at the beginning of the service, okay? Um, if, if, if I look a little uh, peculiar today, if I act a little strange today, if I happen to nod off in the service, I'm just, I'm just giving you a heads up. It's, it's been a long week and the last two days, extremely long days. Many of you know, uh, after 29 years of living in the same house uh, out in the country, uh, I'm now a city slicker. As of, um, as of yesterday morning, uh, the move started at 6.30 a.m. and everything was uh, moved and unloaded uh, by 8.45. Uh, I was in the shower and on the way to uh, a memorial service here at, uh, at, at 9.15. So uh, we're in. Thank you for all of those who were able to help in various ways. Uh, it, it made all the difference in the world. Um, I trust that I will not have to move again for 29 more years, because uh, then Chad will get to make that move on my behalf. Uh, but, but anyway, it's, it's in and it's done. Uh, what I've discovered in my first night in town, um, there are different noises in town than there are in the country. I sleep right through uh, the cry of a fox, uh, the sound of a coyote, uh, the scratching of things on a roof. Those don't bother me anymore. but. Uh, um, you know, when you have neighbors who yell, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Uh, yeah, there's just, just different noises, makes it, makes it a whole different world. Uh, also, I have far too many doors to lock in this house, all right? Uh, when they built this house, they put too many doors to outside, all right? I'm, I'm used to two, all right? Uh, but anyway, uh, it's, it's great, it's good to be in. Uh, but it, it has been a very challenging weekend. We had two funerals and two weddings Friday and Saturday. So uh, just very, very busy days around here. Thank you to all of the church staff who uh, did lots of extra things to make uh, everything go smoothly around here, particularly uh, yesterday's service. So uh, kudos to uh, our many deacons uh, who showed up yesterday and our volunteers who showed up uh, to make the uh, memorial reception yesterday go very, very smoothly. The family deeply appreciated. I had a couple of texts and calls afterwards uh, of, of how much that was appreciated. So we say thanks for all that. Um, I think Shelly is sleeping in today. Um, and she didn't get me water for this morning. So no, <laughs> just, I don't need 20 cups of water now. Okay, we're okay. We're, we're fine. But uh, anyway, let me, uh, let me jump on in. And actually a couple of things before I get to announcements. I know there's a couple here who celebrate their 25th anniversary this week. Jeremontes, would you stand? Let's give them a round of applause. All right. Mike, you'll be very fortunate if, you, if uh, she puts up with you another 25 years. All right? All right. God bless you, too. All right? The best to you. Uh, and that's a wonderful milestone to accomplish. Uh, I was told I was going to be brought, I believe, let me make sure I have the right number in here. I have two tickets. If you're visiting today, this doesn't happen often. All right? Um, um, and actually, since I'm talking about our guest today, if this is your first time here, there are some communication cards in the pew in front of me. See, I told you, who knows what trail I'm going to chase today, all right? Uh, there are communication cards in the pew. I would love for you to fill one out, drop it in the offering. We promise we're not going to beat on your door. We're not going to call you on the phone. But through the mail, we're going to send you some information that tells you about New Hope Church and hopefully answers most of your questions. And we would love to get that into your hands this coming week. Somebody told me they had two tickets for a Giants game this coming week that they are not able to use. It is on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, the 20th. It's a mid-afternoon game. It's at 1245, so you would have to either be retired or own your own business and you control your own hours, all right, or you're going to lie and call in sick. Please do not tell me if you do that. Uh, I do not want to be party to that at all. Um, and so anyway, um, if, if you would like these two tickets that are in my hand for this Wednesday at 12.45, uh, the first one who hand, hand goes up that will pay me $1,000, I will, <laughs> no, just, just kidding. If, uh, if, if you could use these tickets, stand up. If you could use these tickets this Wednesday, stand up. Okay, then I don't have to have a playoff here. Here we go, Tom. All right. Two tickets. 
You're not subbing this Wednesday now. Okay. Terrific, Tom. Enjoy the game. All right. Uh, actually, enjoy, uh, in, in, enjoy Posey, okay? Because he's about the only one playing at all this season. <laughs> Much. All right. Very well. Uh, I'm a Giants fan. All right. Thank God I'm also a Yankees fan this year. All right. Uh, they're, they're bailing us out. Uh, All right, let me take care of some announcements. Uh, That poster board over there, so I don't forget, those are our junior high students in the village of Neonan, Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivoire, Africa. Uh, We have adopted the village of Neonan. I'm not going to explain the story. Most of you know it. If you're new, I'll tell it again down the road. But we just had our 1040i Sunday last week with Mike Cousineau and others from their organization with us. Uh, Those are the 39 junior high students that we are supporting. Junior high in that part of the country is more like our high school. It's a four-year program. It's not a two-year program. And from there they go on, they're able to go on to college. Uh, Most students do not even finish the sixth grade. When they finish the sixth grade, they have to take a test. If they pass that test and only if they pass that test, are they able to advance on to their junior high high school program. Uh, Only 10% of the kids who take the test pass the test then the rest of them end up in the fields uh, or they end up uh, often in in, in slavery or they end up, if they're girls, being sold in marriage at the ages of 9, 10, 11, and 12. And uh, Madame Elise, who is the founder of this little school in this backwater village called Neona, you have to hunt to find this place. It is not easy. Uh, Her heart was led there by the Lord and she has started a school and those 39 kids all passed the sixth grade exam. It was a mir- it's, it's miraculous. Abidjan, the, uh, the commercial capital of the country of Abidjan, has now taken notice of Neonan. Uh, two years ago, uh, the second highest score in the country came from one of her students. And this past year, the highest score in the country came from one of her students. One of her junior high students now has been advanced to a special state science program in Abidjan. Uh, And so we are just so pleased to be a part of that. And over the last two years, we have been sponsoring all of these kids. Some faces are changing. You will see some kids drop out and other kids take their place. We don't always know. Communication is tough in that part of the world. Every year when we talk with Madame Elise, Sometimes parents come and take their kids away, um, and, and we don't always know what the end result is. Um, but most of these kids are the same. There are some new ones that, would, that, that Madame Elise has filled in, and if you would like to sponsor a student, it's $585 for a year. And what that sponsorship provides them is clothing, their books, and their food, for, and, and their transportation. We bought them bikes because they have to walk seven miles each direction to go to school. Can you imagine students today walking seven miles? How many no-shows do you think you would have on a regular basis? And they don't walk it once a day, they walk it twice a day. So that's 28 miles a day. You know, you guys keep track of your steps on your iPhone. Can you imagine what seven miles, 28 miles, how many steps that would turn out to be? And that's just to and from school, not the other walking they do. So we provided them 28 bikes two years ago. And with that 585, that also includes the maintenance on their bicycles. Whether they need new chains or new tires each year, whatever needs to be replaced, that 585 includes all of that. So if you would like to sponsor a student for a year, come up there. There's a pin there. Put your name uh, by where their name is. If you see a smiley face next to their name, they already have a sponsor. Okay? Uh, the previous sponsor from last year has said, I want to continue to sponsor my child again. If you do not see a smiley face, you can go up there, put your name by a student that you select, and then you will be contacted by the office this week on how to follow up with that sponsorship, okay? Uh, last year, our, our last week, our goal was to raise $25,000 for our projects this next February in Ivory Coast, Africa. We are building a dining room that these 39 students will be able to take their meals in, plus the 26 elementary students that Madame Halise has adopted, all 66 or 67 of those kids. She houses them, she feeds them, she sees to their education. We have built two dormitories over the last two years, three years, and a library that is uh, that iPads are provided, and they are learning way above 
because of that iPad education and that library, and you all are responsible for all of that. Our last project in this village will be this coming year, and it's to build a dining facility. When I was there last February, what I noticed, and I asked Madame Elise, I said, how do you feed all these people? Where do they go sit? And she said, they just sit on the ground. They don't mind. It's all they have. So we're going to build, it's going to be like a pavilion that will have kind of a room on the back end that it will be an open pavilion out front with tables and chairs. And so uh, for that and to repair a roof which is there that a tornado took the top of it off, uh, our goal was to raise $25,000 last Sunday. With gifts that came in already and pledges, we are just about $1,500 from our goal. And many of you took... Many of you took a pledge card last week to think about it, pray about it. You can, if you brought those back, you can put them in the offering today. If you already are prepared to write the check today, we need those by the end of the November. But if you brought it today, please make the check to New Hope, but write on the envelope, Neonan or Ivory Coast or 1040i, and it will go to that project. All right? So thank you very much. You, are to, you should applaud yourselves for what you've done already uh, in that goal. Let me move quickly now. You can pick up your tickets for the, uh, the Oktoberfest, or we're calling it the Harvest of Blessing. It is a celebration of our 25 years uh, as a church that merged. A church from Fresno that I was pastoring merged this church that was already at this location 25 years ago. And uh, we are going to celebrate what God has blessed us with over these past 25 years. It'll be a good evening, and so tickets are available out in the uh, pavilion today. Widow's Lunch Bunch meets today. That information is in your bulletin. Please take note of all of the other Bible studies that are kicking off, particularly Financial Peace begins this afternoon at 4 o'clock before our evening service here at 6 o'clock. If you have never taken a financial uh, Bible study before, particularly young couples, I would encourage you to take this class. It's not too late to show up and get involved. If you are uh, an older couple, you're never too old to get things going right, all right? So uh, I heartily recommend. I've taken uh, financial peace and crown ministries an equivalent of about 12 times. I'm a slow learner, okay? Uh, but it's good, good reminders, just good stuff that it covers. So I would encourage you to do that. Uh, did anybody notice anything different when you arrived on the property today? Anybody notice anything different? Okay, when you leave, please notice. The Jams building, we call the Murbach building as well, it's freshly painted. Now, it was white before, it's still white, all right? <laughs> It's just not dirty white anymore, all right? It's really, really clean white, all right? And uh, we didn't know that uh, we could paint vinyl, all right? And it's a newer process that's out. And so we were able to do that. Um, and, and you should have noticed what would have been different are the two bright red doors on the Jam Center, all right? Uh, they're really bright red, and they look really, really good, all right? So I uh, hope you take note of that. Man camp. We call it man camp because men don't retreat. That's what I was told, all right? Uh, anyway, it's October 20th to 22nd. If you're going to be attending, they would love for you to sign up with your name and your contact. Even if you've already contacted Mark, please sign as it comes by you today. Uh, if you're going to bring a RV, I think there's room for one more RV. Uh, otherwise, you get to bring a tent, all right? Uh, so, would you please sign up for that? And there is service here tonight. Remember, as of last Sunday... We now, every Sunday night, have a Sunday evening service. It's at 6 o'clock. It's over the bridge. Uh, Mark is going to be preaching this evening. Mark, are you in here? He, uh, hi, Mark. Stand up. Stand up. All right, everybody. Make, that's Mark. That's our associate pastor. And you're going to want to hear the sermon because he is going to sound so much smarter tonight than he has <laughs> because, as you know, we gave him his degree two weeks ago, his master's degree in biblical studies. So the message tonight, I'm sure, will be much, much smarter than ever before, all right? So we're happy for Mark, and he will do a great, great job. So we're thrilled. So I hope to see some of you back at 6 o'clock tonight. Um, we had a couple of weddings, as I told you. That was the Boren wedding and the Fugelsang wedding these last two days. Uh, Jim's here today, so this was his nephew. Um, the Boren family keeps having me do their weddings, and I don't know why, because I keep a promise. Um, it started 20, how many years ago was it? I said 27, but was it 29? 29. I thought of that after I said it. Uh, Jim's dad died 29 years ago. And that's how I reconnected with the Bourne family after high school. Uh, his dad was dying of cancer. 
Uh, his dad got saved at a, by a hospital chaplain um, while he was sick and getting treatment. And he wanted to be baptized. And um, he wanted his family to know that he had really made a commitment to faith to Christ. And so he wanted to be baptized. So he told his wife, well, his wife went, went, went they, they weren't part of a church, but they figured if you want to be baptized, you probably should call a Baptist. And so they went to the Yellow Pages. Do you know what Yellow Pages are? Yeah, that, people have no idea anymore what Yellow Pages, it, it was a, fo- do you even know what a phone book is? Okay, all right. So they went to the yellow page of the phone book, and they went under churches and found Baptists, and she just started calling, and she either got no answers, or when she got through to somebody, they said, well, we don't have any planned, or they said, you know, you got to show up on the fifth Sunday, and you're going to be immersed. He had cancer and was in a wheelchair, confined to bed most of the time, but a nurse overheard the frustration, and she said, you know, we got a volunteer chaplain who might, might help you out, and I got the call, and didn't know I was going to realize that this was a family I knew a bit already, and so I showed up at the house, and I saw pictures of the kids, and I said, I went to school, I went to school with that one, and that, I know you guys. And um, first time I ever sprinkled somebody, I had to call my Presbyterian pastor friend to teach me how to do it, because <laughs> I, I didn't know how. And, and uh, anyway, we did a service in their house and um, baptized them. They wanted to sing, and nobody else knew how to, I, I led the song. Jim Watson was with me, all right? So Jim sings about as good as I do. And, and, uh, but what a sweet, sweet time. It's a, it's a memory I'll never, ever forget. And then um, the, the, night, the night before Vern died, I was sitting by his bedside, and he said, Tim, uh, there's a promise I want you to make. And he said, um, I, was a, I was not a good man. I was not a good man. I was not a good dad. I was not a great husband. You've got to stay after my family because I won't be around. So I'm leaving the job to you to tell my family about Jesus. Every chance you get. And um, I don't know, I've married probably eight or nine in the family, some of the siblings. Um, J- Jim's heard me tell this, so I won't embarrass him. When, when he told me, he said, Tim, the one you'll never get to in my family is going to be my oldest son, Jim. And he's saying, Jim, Jim lost his wife when their daughter was just a toddler. And uh, when we have things like that happen to us, we sometimes get angry and we get hard. But let me tell you this, the first one in his family who invited Jesus in his life was Jim. Jim has been in church with me as his pastor. He is, he, he is long-suffering and persevering. It's been 29 years. It's been 29 years. And uh, at every wedding, at every wedding, I find a place that I pause and I give about a four-minute gospel message I tell the story I've just told you, and I let them know if they want to be reconnected with a bad man who made a good decision at the end of his life, they need to know Jesus. We did it last night again. I don't know when they'll quit asking, but I'm going to keep telling the sermon. I'm going to keep preaching it. Um, Joni Anderson has started her uh, radiation treatment this week. She's had three treatments. And she's sitting back there in her regular spot, all right, guarding the thermostat for me. And um, praising Jesus through it all. So keep praying for her. Um, Deline's brother, uh, that's Mike Cousineau, who was here last week, his wife's brother was found dead in a motel room while he was traveling. And Deline had to leave here and go back there to be with her family. So please be remembered to pray for her. Uh, the View family, their son, 21 year old son, it was his service that was here yesterday. Mark Gerlach has started treatment, I've been told, this past week, so continue to remember to pray for each of them. So those are the updates that we wanted to share with you. I'm going to ask our ushers to come forward, wait on us as we have our morning ties and offering. It's great to have Tim Kepler back from Hawaii. All right? All right. Woo! I've been to Hawaii, and I have never tanned like that. Man. i got to find your beach. Uh, would you join with me as we pray? Uh, Father, I'm so grateful for, uh, for you. Um, I, I, I hope telling the stories of what this past weekend have been is not interpreted as um, that I'm discouraged uh, or that I'm down. Father, this this body may be tired and 
mentally I might not be too sharp but Father what I have rested in in the adventure of this week both in anticipation of all that there was to get through and even in preparation for today I have realized that there is no way I can live this life that you have called me to live apart from trust and confidence in you my rest is not found in sleep my rest is not found in vacation my rest is found in you it's a good reminder so Father, I say thank you for your abiding presence. You promise to never leave us or forsake us. You promise to be not just our sometimes Savior, not just our sometimes God, but you promise to be our everyday life. It is your own Son who, before his departure from this world, before all of his work was finished, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Father, thank you for your son being my way through the adventure of these past few days. Thank you for the sufficiency of your son for being the truth that we could share, whether it's at a wedding or a funeral or a morning worship service. Thank you that if our attention is riveted upon you, the one who is the truth, you make the difference. And Father, thank you for being the source of life as we live the truth and we walk the way. For the privileged Father of uh, worshiping with those who are here today, what a joy it is to share this time together. Thank you for bringing Tim back to us from his travels and thank you for what you will uh, share through him and the team today as we lift our hearts in worship. For the privilege of giving and sharing, Lord, we are told today in Haggai chapter 2 that all the silver, all the gold is yours. May we express that, Father, in our gifts to you today. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, I'm going to do something I've rarely done in my life. Um, boy, everything, everything we sang together today, you need to understand... I believe every word of it with all of my heart. It's, it's, it's all biblical truth just put to music. Um, I, don't, I don't want you to think I'm sounding weird or peculiar. Um, but I believe God's been whispering in my heart throughout the entire worship service. And um, I don't want to mess it up yet with a sermon. I don't know what brought all of you here today. I mean, I, I, I know some of you. I mean, you come every week. But I don't know what's been going on in your world. Others of you, you've been coming a few weeks. I've seen you. I said hi. I've sh shaken your hand. There's some I've never met before. I, I don't know what brought you here today. And maybe it was for what you've heard already, what you've sensed and you've experienced already. Here's what I know. God sent his son to die on a cross to pay a debt of our sinfulness. And you might have thought all your life you're a pretty good person. You don't, you don't get to go to heaven when you die and you don't get the privilege of sharing the life of Jesus on earth by being a good person. You can't be good enough to deserve either one of those. You need Jesus Christ. If we could have heaven and if we could have God by just being good, then God would have never sent his son to die on a cross for us. He would have just left us with the Ten Commandments and said, that's enough. And maybe you've heard enough today. Maybe you know that God brought you here today to this service for a reason. That reason is for you to invite Jesus Christ to be your Savior. You've never said, God, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. And I want you to come live in my life today. 
just a second, I'm going to ask Tim to sing. What do you got picked over there? <laughs> How about Amazing Grace? Okay. I know both of you know it. Um, and, and I'm going to ask him to sing a verse of that. And, and, and I'm going to ask you in just a moment. We're going to bow our heads. And I'm going to ask you to invite Jesus in your life. And, and maybe others of you, maybe your regulars, but you'd have to admit Jesus hadn't been your Lord. Yeah, 5, 10, 15, you invited him to be your Savior, and you show up when it's convenient, and you do things when it's appropriate, but you've really never... You've never said, okay, God, I'm, I'm all yours, 100%. I'm, there's, there's nothing in reserve. I'm, I'm all yours. I'm even going to use a term here that I grew up hearing almost every Sunday, and it's probably why I've stayed away from it so long. Maybe there are some of you here today, and you're just backslidden. For those of you who never heard that term, that means you've slid backwards. Pretty smart, huh? You've 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 just just you've let it go. God brought you here for a significant difference in your life from this day forward. Would you bow your heads with me? And if you need to do one of those three things, invite Jesus into your heart. If you need to repent because you've been backslidden, if you need to to give God permission not just to be your Savior, but to be your Lord. Would you pray with me today? Quietly in your own heart, right now. Dear Father, you know our hearts. You know that this is not what we had planned for this morning. But sometimes your plans are very different than ours. And you change us. You move us. I don't know why we are gathered here at 4620 East Knees just like this. This particular group of people, this particular point in time. But I sense it's, you're up to something. And we want to give you the freedom to finish that work today. So for the man or woman who has a who's had a tough time saying the word sinner. Thank you that maybe at this moment they're freely saying it to you, knowing that you love them and you want to live in their life and you want to take them home to be with you someday. Thank you for the one who already is your child, but they've been rebellious and they've lived repugnantly before you. They're admitting that to you at this very moment. Father, for the ones who are desiring your lordship in their lives. Maybe there's been a direction you've been trying to take them to teach a Sunday school class or participate in a worship team or become part of the deacons around this church or you might even be calling them to a place like Africa. And they've said no and they're ready to say yes. Thank you for hearing our prayer. Tim, would you sing a verse of Amazing Grace while we continue to pray? With your head still bowed and nobody's going to come approach you or anything at this moment. But if during that time of prayer, 
you prayed one of those three prayers, would you just kind of slip a hand up and back down so we can just give God thanks? Okay. Okay. Amen. Okay. Terrific. Amen. All right. I'm struggling with what I'm going to ask you to do next. Please understand. You didn't have to raise a hand for what you've already prayed to be true and real. Simply given me a chance to say thanks to the Lord for those hands that went up, for choices that were just made. But sometimes others seeing the choice that you've made brings great encouragement to them. Sometimes it prompts others to make that same choice. I'm going to ask Tim to sing one more verse of Amazing Grace and whether you raised your hand or not, but if you've, you've made an important decision in your life today, I'm going to ask you to do something. This is, I, I, man, if you're new, I don't do this often. No, this is really important or I wouldn't do it today. But I'm going to ask you to take one more courageous step and while he sings this next verse, I'm going to ask of those of you who, who raised your hands or if you prayed a prayer and didn't raise your hand, but you're ready to make this, would you just come meet me right here at the front? I would love to pray with you together as a group before we wrap up our service today. If you're willing to do that, would you just come forward while Tim sings? I'm not going to make you talk. God, our Father, I don't know what the choices that each one of these who've stepped forward have made. But Father, what I do know is something important has been going on. I know that what has transpired in these last few minutes was not my plan. I argued with you through two songs, and you were relentless. So I know that in this group of folks who've gathered here at the front, there are some men and some women who have invited you to become their personal Savior and Lord today. I say thank you. Thank you for the way in which you've orchestrated things that brought us to this moment to make this choice. There are those who are standing here today that, oh, they're, they're going to forget me and they're going to forget maybe the exact location of where it transpired, but they won't forget this moment in their life. They will reflect on it for years and decades to come. This was a life-changing moment. There may be some marriages that are saved at this moment. There, there may be some life course decisions, but thank you. And Father, there are some who are sitting in the pew that have made those same decisions. The fact that they did not come forward does not make their decisions any less valuable or important or truth or honest. I just simply at this moment say thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless each of you. I don't know what God's up to, but thank you all for being a part of it today. If you find the time in the next few days, shoot me an email and let me know what these choices were. It would be wonderful to be able to share those with others. God bless you. You may go have a seat. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm in a dilemma. If I don't preach a fast sermon, then you guys are going to be behind the 8 o'clock service. 
God bless you. Go have a great afternoon, okay? Go have a great day. I don't think we need to preach. I don't think we need to preach a sermon.